Hello, everyone. Today, I have something for you that I've been teasing in a few of my previous videos that I've released recently, and that is my 486 DX2 80 megahertz system. Although I have another computer that can do pretty much everything this does, and that's my Pentium 3 running Windows 98, I really wanted a true 486 for a couple of reasons. Number one, a couple of games seem to run glitchy or wonky when running with a CPU that's too fast. I find this is the case with Descent and XCOM. Number two, for nostalgic purposes. My very first PC was a 486 IBM Aptiva with Windows 3.1 and DOS. So I really wanted to relive those memories uh, of having a true DOS system and Windows 3.1. And number three, I really like the challenge of being limited. There's always that one game that just won't run and you got to tweak your memory settings or find something else that's going wrong, whether it's a bad CD-ROM drive or bad RAM. I ran into a couple of those issues in the past few weeks with this PC and it's been challenging, but fun at the same time. Finally, I also have a roll in sound canvas, something I didn't have as a kid and Going back and playing through all the games I love, like Hexen and Heretic with general MIDI music has been awesome. So I'm going to show you all of that, a bunch of games, a complete review of the system inside and out. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. Starting with the front, and I really like the industrial aesthetic of this type of case design, as opposed to the Aptiva I had as a kid that had a more family-friendly look. I have a 16x CD-ROM and a 3.5 inch floppy drive. I didn't opt for the 5 and a quarter as I rarely use those, if ever. And you know, the most frustrating and time-consuming activity with setting up this system for me really was loading and installing software. If you use burn disks for ISOs, that 16X is going to cause so many problems as it struggles to read. And besides CD and floppy, that is really the only way I've been transferring files. So besides games, think benchmarking tools, sound blaster drivers, and the like. I know there are modern workarounds to this, using flash drive IDE adapters. I have recently decided to just put the hard drive into a more modern system and do a hard drive to hard drive transfer. Because another problem I had installing software, say when it unpacks larger files, I would run into CRC errors all over the place and get corrupted files. I believe this is due to aging RAM perhaps, not sure what's going on here, but I found if I adjusted the placement and combination of RAM sticks, I could get it working again. I do have a turbo button that can bring the speed down to 33 megahertz if I so need, if I wanna get more backwards compatibility and a reset button that gets used a lot. I forgot how easy it is to freeze DOS up. And I have an on-screen display of the current CPU speed. I have a whole bunch of ports here with this old case. I don't think I'll ever need any of these expansion slots. I have AT keyboard. Here are my sound card connections. So we got game port for my joystick and the various audio IO. Something interesting with this serial and parallel port, the IO is actually connected to my VLB card and this serial port is what I'm using for my mouse. And you'll see once I get to the inside, down here is my VGA through a Trident VLB card. 
Here you can see the IDE cables going directly into the VLB video card along with the two IO connections on the left. This sound blaster is awesome. I'll leave full spec details in the video description, but it was really easy to set up and it's really friendly pairing it up with that Roland sound canvas. Here's the CPU hiding behind this cable. It is a somewhat rare, or so I've been told, Texas Instruments 486DX2 running at 80 megahertz. So pulling out that Trident VLB card and getting real up close and personal. It's been fun working with this as I really only have experience with PCI and AGP video cards. But yeah, it is absolutely gigantic. Likewise, up close with the Sound Blaster, and it is a CT4170. Like I said earlier, really friendly with DOS and outputting MIDI to the Roland. I'd just like to quickly take this opportunity to ask if you've enjoyed the content so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. At the time of releasing this video, I'm very close to reaching the 500 sub milestone. Loading up the NSSI software, if you're unfamiliar with this program, it is an amazing system info and benchmarking tool. It provides so much detail for everything you could ask for. And the coolest thing about this program is the real-time CPU performance info. So I bet some of you are jonesing for me to push that turbo button. And there we go. We can see everything change in real time. And just going through some more options in the tool, we have everything from BIOS info, to video, all memory, drives, ports, network, multimedia and software, operating system, etc. So I've captured a ton of game footage, both through just mounting my camera and filming the monitor and capturing the ambient speaker output, but also through direct capture by transferring the VGA and audio output into HDMI and going directly into a capture card. As tempting as it is to just splice all this footage together and make like an hour long video, it's probably best if I keep everything tightly edited and offer some commentary along the way. So this is Biomenace 3 on the screen right now, and this game does not make use of the Roland Sound Canvas. All of the other games after this one do, but I thought I'd just demonstrate, you know, an older DOS game that isn't Duke Nukem or Prince of Persia or Doom. Next up is Lotus 3. Lotus 3 uses the sound canvas, however it must be put into MT32 mode. So without getting too far into the weeds here, the MT32 is another Roland device that has different instruments than the default setting on the SC55, but the SC55 can be put into MT32 mode to more accurately play games that were designed on that device. Did you get all that? And by the way, this is the only game I'm going to be showing that uses MT32 mode. The soundtrack to this game is superb. There are about a half a dozen songs you can choose to play during your races. The game kind of plays like Outrun, not quite as arcadey, but a cool old school racing game. Next up is Descent 1, and we are in full SC55 Roland Sound Canvas General MIDI mode here. And we have a dark industrial synthwave soundtrack. I am playing with a joystick. It is possible to use a splitter to use the game port for both the Roland and a joystick at the same time, and I had no issue setting that up.
Raven's Heretic 1 here and another great soundtrack. And I've always loved the music on that second level, but the first level is absolutely epic. And where you really hear the difference the Roland makes is on the percussion and drumming. The music on Tyrion sounds great, even with just using your sound blaster, and I've heard the argument that it is the way it's meant to be played, but I don't know, it sounds pretty good using MIDI, don't you think? A little disappointed with Hexen, uh, I am experiencing some significant slowdown, which is quite surprising because I figured uh, my CPU speed could handle this game. And I remember in the 90s, I didn't have any issues uh, playing it on my 486. So I might try upgrading my CPU to something a little bit faster.
Finally, I did install Windows 3.1 and I'm having some big issues. It looks okay on the surface and I can run everything that has been pre-installed, but where I try to install new software it really just bites me every step of the way and I get all sorts of errors I've never seen before. I spent a good chunk of my weekend last week trying to figure it out and I was on the Vogons forums and was seeming to stump everyone there. It also takes about five minutes to load, so something is going on. I heard that there are issues with Cyrix CPUs possibly and Windows 3.1 and since my Texas Instruments CPU is a modified Cyrix, it could be something to do with that. So again, another reason to maybe upgrade. But as you can see, I can do basic Windows 3.1 stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care as always and hope to see you next time. Bye now.